And hello, good evening and welcome. It is Thursday night, as ever was. It is Thursday the 6th of May in 2000... May? No, it's Thursday the 6th of March. Nearly wished our lives away there, ladies. If it had been the 6th of May, it'd be a lot warmer than it had been today. That'd be absolutely for certain. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is Thursday the 6th of March and tonight marks, I think, a first uh, because we have with us a superstar. <laughs> I'm all embarrassed now. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed because it's true. And that superstar, you, if you're on Twitter, you will know her as Granny Louisa. If you're not on Twitter, you may know her as Louise Ross um, from Leicester. From and Leicester, that's from, right. From Leicester, and that's all I'm going to say for the moment, for all will become clear. So that's uh, Louise Ross, who's, who's in, in the centre monitor. Um, and I'll put you full screen. Good evening, Louise. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> and you. And you. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll, I won't make small talk about the weather and stuff like that. Just say welcome along and thank you so much for joining us. I'm very pleased to be invited. Thank you. Oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. Dave, can I interrupt you? Yep. The, the stream is absolutely unviewable. It's completely pixelated. I'm getting complaints all over the place. Really? Yeah. Two seconds. I don't know why that should be. I'm not seeing any errors here. What's the Google stream like? The YouTube stream? Uh, I'll just check that. It looks fine. Yeah, the YouTube stream is fine, just SVP. Is it everybody on SVP? Seems to be, yep. Yeah. Right, I'm just checking it now. I don't understand why that would have happened. This is why we put the Google, the YouTube stream up as the backup. Seems to be, yeah. Oh, yes, it has gone rather queer in order, hasn't it? And I don't know why that would be. Um, let me just check. I'm going to restart that stream. Okay. And here it goes restarting. People will probably need to uh, refresh. I do apologise about this. And yet I've been playing video out all day. Okay, that seems to have sorted it. Yeah, is that better for everybody now? Uh, better for me, yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't play any video out much. Right, sorry, chat, is everybody seeing that now? Okay, I do apologise for that. I've got no idea what happened. That being the case, we won't bother playing the titles in. Where was I? Oh, yes, I didn't, I didn't reduce Louise. Um, and for some reason, I'm here in Skype again. Are you getting it, Sav? I am, yes. Louise, yes. Are, are in, on your Skype, are you set to do not disturb? Um, I don't understand what that means. At the top left-hand side, you'll see a little green icon, little green cloud-shaped thing of your Skype mm. window. No, no, I'm doing it on an iPad, you know. Ah, it's, right. It's don't worry about don't, it. Don't don't worry about it. We'll we'll manage. I didn't realise it was an iPad. That's a damn good picture for an iPad. Sorry. Ah, oh, it's okay. It's fine. That's it's fine. Um, right. Yes. And as per usual, I've got the effervescent loveliness and bountiful beautiliciousness that is Sav. And you're not laughing tonight, are you? 
No, I'm not. And I know where it's coming from. <laughs> As it happens, it's me. Oh, it's technology. No, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. Uh, I don't know why, but I can't get that to go. Do not disturb. Isn't that amazing? Not to worry. I give up. I give up. <laughs> right. Let's uh, let's get on with it. Let's get on with the show then. And I and I I'm so pleased that Louise is here, because people will will maybe know that Leicester Stop Smoking Services have ploughed a brand new path. It's, it's a path that hasn't been taken by anybody else as yet that we know of. And the architect and engineer of this path of bringing in harm reduction via the use of e-cigs is Louise Ross, Granny Louisa on Twitter, who's with us tonight. And I, I want to find out a little bit more about the person behind this. So, Louise, where where did you start? Why did you um, get involved in, in the Leicester Stop Smoking Services to start with? What's the background to all of this? Um, well, I've, I've managed the Stop Smoking Service for 10 years and um, I was asked to do an article about E6 for the Leicester Mercury and at the time, this was like about October time, and I felt very, very um, unsure about the the, the dangers of, uh, of, of, of e-cigarettes and so I wrote an article that was actually very hesitant and, and had all the what we now know of the myths about you know how it could renormalize smoking and that sort of thing and I saw an advert for the e-cig summit and thought I really really wanted to go to that because I knew that there was a, a, a lot more information that I needed to to you know make proper decisions and that was really a turning point uh, as as a lot of people on on Twitter will have heard already, I, I thought it was a brilliant day, and I came away completely in a different mindset to to, to what I went with. Well, yeah, okay. Let's let's talk about the mindset pre ECG mm. summit, and and you say that that had you been convinced by what you're now calling the myths, the the the, uh, the notion that this would renormalise smoking, that. Uh, that it would get kids into it, that flavours were a bad thing and so on and so forth. How did that, where did that come from and how did it impact you? Yeah, I don't think I'd even thought about it that deeply. It it just seemed, um, uh, it, it seemed too worrying, I suppose, to just assume that it would be harmless. Um, I talked to a, a GP in Leicester who actually wanted to supply e-cigarettes, you know, for all his patients, all his smoking patients. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought this was this was really quite dangerous because, you know, what about pregnant women? What about young people? Um, you know, who was actually going to monitor how how effective it was? Um, and he 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 decided not to proceed with it at that point but in fact since then we've collaborated um, and he was a speaker at the eSig learning forum that we put on in Leicester and uh, I think he's he's going to be um, you know a, a great champion of the of the whole idea indeed so all of all of this then prior to that you were wary of eSigs and then you went down to the eSig summit now I was there as well and what interests me is what changed your attitude what changed your mind at the e-cig summit what did you hear that that prompted this i don't know what you would call it revelation i'll call it a revelation a turning point yes so what 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 happened to to create this turning point for you well i heard you talk for a start i thought i thought you spoke very very powerfully um a lot of people did didn't they um i think the the, the people on the on the platform spoke really well um, and and very convincingly as well there were, there were clearly some people who who had reservations um, but but you know Robert West prevent, presented the evidence um, and and his views and and he presented them you know so articulately um, and it made me realize that we actually could see a huge drop in smoking rates you know I, I come from a background uh, a professional background background where we want to see fewer people smoking and this seemed to have so much potential but also at the same time I suppose back at back at base we were hearing from um, people who were coming to our service saying you know I don't want the the stuff that we're traditionally offering like the patches gum lozenges that sort of thing they wanted to use the e-cigarette and I think 
you know, above everything, we should listen to what people are saying and and give them what they want. That's 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 really interesting. Um, and it, it leads me down a, a whole little channel of questions that have just come spr sprung into my mind. Um, I, I'm assuming that you've got pretty good figures on what the uptake of uh, patches and gums and, and inhalators mm. and strips and and all the various other six or seven different kinds of NRT there are. Since the uh, since you've started this this ESIG program, and I want I'll get more details about that in a minute. But since you've started that, have you seen a change in what people want to use in order to, and a change in the attitude? Are, are people no longer coming to you to try and quit? Are they coming to you just to become safer? Is what I'm trying to say, I suppose. Um, I think it's hard to generalise at the moment, and if you ask me that again in six months' time, we'll have much a, a much better idea of, of what people are, are saying. Because at the well, up until now, if people wanted to use e-cigarettes, generally they wouldn't use the service, and I was worried that we were just you know losing potential quitters right, left, and centre, and we, that we had to change our offer to bring people back in into the service. Um, and, and that's what I'm hoping will happen now. We launched the eSig e friendly scheme um, on the 1st of March and uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the literature for that in a minute. Um, but certainly all this year it's been very difficult to get people into the service in the numbers that we used to be getting and, and I, I know that the eSig the e is, is the reason for that. That's so interesting. That is so interesting. How how much of a drop have you seen then over the course of say the last twelve months? About twenty percent less people, fewer people than than we'd had the previous year. But that's that's quite a lot. We're still getting people who want to use traditional licensed products, and I think you know we we've got a duty to to give people the choice. Um, you know, if, if if that's what people want, and and a lot of the people that use our service will have will have used patches, perhaps relapsed, want to use them again. We we'd offer them a full range, but we'd also talk about the potential to use e-cigarettes as well. Mm. Right. You, you you've you've spoken about relapse there, and and I'm sorry, I'm 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 so interested in all of this because everything I've heard coming out of official circles you know the big high ups in public health will say with nrt you are twice as likely to be able to quit but you're at the coal face and you see this happen all the time what kind of relapse rate have you seen with traditional nrt um when we when we followed up people a year later after they've quit with us we followed them up a year later and about 30% are still not smoking. Um, it, it depends. It, it depends how big a sample you you, you take. Um, but we're often working with some of the most disadvantaged uh, people in our communities, um, who have um, a lot of pressures on them to start smoking again. Often they they're living in families where everybody smokes. Um, and I mean, you, you, you know the story as well as I do, you know, how, how difficult it is to actually stay off cigarettes. But, but again, when we're talking to people who are vaping, they're, they're saying that they haven't touched a cigarette for, for months and they don't want to, that there seems to be a new kind of um, motivation to stay smoke free once people are using e-cigarettes. It, it's interesting that you've used that phrase, uh, stay smoke free rather than nicotine abstinent. And I have heard from one or two, uh, again, public health professionals who would say that nicotine abstinence is, of course, the best course. And yet, everything that I've seen uh, statistic-wise tells me that if you go for nicotine abstinence in 93% of cases, that's not going to work. Um, you, you obviously have a higher rate there, but even so, in 70% of cases, that's not going to work. Are, are you saying that the people that you, you speak to that are using e-cigs are achieving, I'm going to call it a smoke-free lifestyle, and are not relapsing at that rate, that they, they've found something that works for them and is just going to keep them happily um, harm-free or smoke-free, which mm -hmm. the two are interchangeable, aren't they, really? Yeah, 
I, th I think it's too early for us to say, and that's that's why I'm, I was so keen to get this scheme running as soon as possible. Because the sooner we get started with that and 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 start to get information back from from people that are using the scheme, we're calling it the eSig Insight Scheme because it'll give us really really valuable data about what happens at you know 12 weeks, six months, 12 months, uh, whether people are dual using, um, whether they're still using nicotine but safely. Um, or whether they've completely stopped being, um, you know, nicotine users. That, that actually, that's that's interesting as well because one of, one of the, unusually for me, I've written some questions down for myself to remind me of what I wanted to ask because I think this is this stands a chance. Well, it doesn't just stand a chance. I think this is groundbreaking what you're doing, um, and I know that there are there are a few people that have got reservations on, if you like, both sides of the divide. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll say our side and I'll say the side that rhymes with ants and might have jail in front of it. Um, so how, how, how will the ESIG e Insight Scheme work? Because I know you're signing people up to follow-ups and stuff like that. What, what's the, um, the ethos behind it? How, how is that going to be applied? How will it work? Well, shall I tell you just a little bit about how, how it came to be? Yes. And, uh, first of all, I'll, sh I'll show you the, that's the, is that, trying to hold right, it. Right, right, like there you so, go. So that's, that's the, um, the information leaflet. It looks huge and very, very wordy, but uh, we had to, for, for research purposes, we had to get an awful lot of information in there. Um, but... Uh, um, Trying to, sorry, probably making a right hash of this. But there's a lot of it. There is, there is, but uh, it's it's written in very friendly language. When when I came back from the ESIG summit, I wrote a proposal that would allow us as a service to um, enable the use of e-cigarettes without us actually supplying, because we know we're not allowed to supply. But you know, I wanted to to do something to to draw people in who would who would. You know, be willing to to use e cigs and share their information with us. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I ran it past the team, who thought it was great. I took it to public health, um, and and there was this like really tense moment where our director of public health was was reading my proposal in silence, and uh, you know I was thinking, well, you know, what have I done? You know, am I going to lose my job or something like that? And he looked up at the end and said, "This is really good. You should do it." And uh, you know, I, I I thought you and and the viewers would would like to know that there is at least one director of public health who's, um, you know, was absolutely convinced that it was the right thing to do. Would you do me a favour, Louise, and give him a name check, please? I think Rod everybody needs to know who's who's good and who's not. <laughs> okay, it's Rod Moore, and uh, he's um, yeah, he's a good guy. Sounds like it. Sorry, I interrupted. Do carry on. No, 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 not at all. He said that there were there were processes to go through. Now, you know, he's a lot cleverer than I am. I just want to get things done. He said it had to go through medicines management, information governance, the research people, and it would have to go through the health and wellbeing board, and that's chaired by the deputy mayor of Leicester. And he helped me write, you know, a, a, a really thorough proposal. It's true. You've had to jump through some hoops there. All of those different people to get this to go. Yeah, yeah. Good grief. Yeah. But we got it done so quickly. I wanted it done within... Um, I hoped that it would be done by January. It, it wasn't. But, you know, we've, we've really pushed it hard and we finally launched it on the 1st of March. We've, we've had to be um, a bit cautious about it because I run... Um, at the stop smoking service for, for three local authorities and it's only Leicester City who've been um, uh, able to sign it off. Uh, we're still waiting for Leicestershire County and Rutland to um, to you know take that step so I, I just need to say that as a word of caution. Mm -hmm. and sorry I'm, I was probably rambling along and, and forgot to answer a question that you just asked me. No I'm, I, to be honest I'm finding all this fascinating and I do apologise for, for, for interrupting before. So we'd, we'd got to the point oh, I, was, where... I was telling you how it was going to work. Yes. So and we've also got a flyer that um, we're going to put out in GP practices um, uh, you know, we're going to send it out as an e-shop to Leicester City Football Club. They've got something like thirty thousand uh, members on their um, their uh, you know network. So that will go out possibly this week. 
um, to encourage people to kind of come to us and uh, and you know sign up with us. So people would um, be assessed by one of my advisors. They'd have, make a choice between either one of the licensed products or e-cigarettes. They'd have to buy their own e-cigarettes, but as a thank you for allowing us to follow them up and get you know their views on what happened we give them a 30 pound voucher and that's that's in a way offsetting the the, the cost of um uh you know buying their own e-cigarettes indeed um it, again it's just occurred to me while we're sitting talking here because it, it, it's all really quite new to me um what about current e-cig users is there any value in um your stop smoking service in following up current e-cig users that have perhaps just started since the, the the first of the year, for instance. Definitely, yes. I I think they I think they would be new enough e-cig users to still regard themselves as smokers, um, and and many have already told us. You know, when we talk to people at health fairs, for instance, they'll say that they're still dual using. So you know, they'll they'll vape a bit, they'll smoke a bit, um, and if you ask. You know, if you didn't have your e-cigarettes, would you would you buy a packet of twenty? And yes, they would. So they're smokers in my mind, and and we could offer them the same the same service. That's that's interesting. So if if if, if anybody in chat knows anyone in the Leicester area that could benefit, I, and and I'll tell you why I say benefit as well, and I'll I'll go full screen for this. Um, the reason I say benefit is because it seems to me, I've done it again, haven't I? <sighs> It, it's. It, I've done it again. Ah, oh, now try. It. There you go. That's better. It, it seems to me that that what Louise is 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 doing here is gathering evidence of how e-cigs are used in harm reduction, without um, being upset and waylaid by the naysayers, as in. The data is is going to be collected by people who are already on the side of public health, for want of a better phrase. And we do know some people who are on the side of public health, and are on Newsnight. And make a hash of it. Um, but we'll come to that later, maybe if we get the time. Um, and this this could indeed help the cause of e-cigs to have a, an accredited public health body. Mm. gathering this information does, does that resonate Louise is that is that kind of where we're at here yeah I think so and I'd also like to thank uh, two people particularly and that's uh, Lorian and Amanda um, both of, of, of which have, have given me a lot of time on the phone we you know we've, we've tweeted we've emailed and they've helped me understand things that um, you know hadn't actually uh, sort of made sense to me at the time, like the difference between people giving us evidence on second generation e-cigs and cig um, I I kind of gathered that second generation would be more effective, that people don't actually like the cig because we'd already had people coming to us and saying, oh, try those e-cigarettes, they're rubbish. But actually what they were doing was, was buying, you know, the little cheap ones in the garage um, or, you know, over the counter in the news agents not finding them satisfactory clearly talking to vapors at the at the conference at the summit rather um, people were getting a very different experience so what we're going to be doing if we're talking to people is asking them to consider using the you know the refillable um, models um, and explaining that people seem to get a better um, you know better experience through that amanda also gave me was it amanda or lorian i've forgotten now sorry sorry to both um gave me a, a contact for a, a vapors forum that we could put on our website so that we can direct people um to to go and get some independent information so they're not relying on us because we we don't know enough about it it's it's you know people like you that have got the expertise well, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I think you know enough about it to know the right thing to do. <laughs> That's the important part. Um, I'm looking at Sav, and she seems to be um, chomping at the bit to bring chat in. What have we got from there, Sav? I've got an awful lot from chat. Um, first of all, chat just want to say a huge well done and wish there were so many others that were like you. Oh, I'll second um, that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Slim UK Vase said, question for Louise. Smoking prevalence is obviously going down faster than previous years. Are smoking cessation services nationwide recognising that e-cigs are the major factor in this decrease? I would say yes. I think if, if any services said it wasn't to do with that, then they, they're not looking at the, um, at the information right in front of them. Okay. Fabulous. Um, Joseph K has said, listen to what the people are saying and give them what they want. Excellent stuff, Louise. Entropy72 said, stop smoking should be made as easy and convenient as possible. Rigidly pushing people into the same old therapies that have repeatedly failed them is not helpful and possibly harmful. Leanna Lawless says, I quit quitting. I got sick of repeating it. Luckily, I got a good doctor. Entropy72 again says, pressure to start smoking again. You mean like being forced to stand outside with the smokers instead of being able to vape inside in your office or workplace? Mr. Desi Vapor said, how many of those 30% who quit using were lying through their teeth? Take this question with a pinch of salt, but I know if I was still smoking and I was trying to give up using NRT but couldn't, I would be embarrassed to admit my failures. Mm. That's not really our experience. Um, when, well, you know, I could, I could talk about that, but actually, that's a bit of a distraction. But um, I, I think we, we we have some good conversations with people that we follow up um, a year later. The the other person, sorry, just interrupting. The other person that I wanted to credit was uh, Professor Jason Hughes, who's a professor at Leicester University, who's done uh, a really really good blog um, that. Uh, we've put out on Twitter, I'm sure you've you've retweeted it, David. Um, Professor Jason Hughes is mm. very, very um, pro e-cigs um, and and feels that the the restrictions and the regulations that are being proposed are absolutely the wrong way to go. So I think he's going to be a, a real um, you know force on your side. It, it, yes, I mean I've I've already tweeted with uh, with Jason and he he does seem to be a good guy. Just on on the subject of the regulations and what's happened with the TPD, what are your feelings on that? Uh, I I I think it's really really bad. Um, I I hope that there's a chance to actually reverse the decisions that have been made, um, and um, I. I don't know what I can do as you know, just one person, but uh, you know, making making noise about you know how how it it should be a, a free choice. It, you know, it should remain a consumer product. I don't believe it should be medicalised. Um, you know, and I'll keep saying that. Wow, wow, um, that that's. <laughs> I'm that sorry. actually answers my next question. <laughs> Does it? Right. Yeah, that Steffi asked exactly that question. Um, I am, um, well, you better read out what Steffi said, but the answer is there. Steffi had said, is Louise worried about the TPD and its outcome? Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I am here to tell you that I can't see chat where I am, so I had no idea Steffi had said that. But great minds obviously think alike. Um, that's quite taken me aback. Um, be, because we we had a, a little bit of a to do when I played that video in earlier. I'm I'm going to play the adverts in right at the end of the show, if that's all right by everybody. And I do apologise to the advertisers, um, but, but I really do think that this conversation that we're having is a lot more important um, at the moment, particularly at the moment. I, I'm I'm very interested in um, the whole notion of of how you, Louise, can, if you like, spread the word. And I, and I, I know you already have. And I'm going to mention, uh, he said, going to camera six, that the UK National Smoking Cessation Conference, which was organised, I don't know how long ago, but which takes place on, uh, I think it's the 12th and 13th of June um, this year, and had no representation from vapors at all but you've sorted that have you not i have yeah yeah partly because the organizers were so keen to do it i i think it was just an opportunity that they hadn't thought about yet um but because we'd had a vapors panel on our learning forum in in january i sorry i'll give a bit of background to that um i wanted to do um 
a, a sort of conference sort of thing in Leicester about e to inform people, you know, some, you know, decision makers, policy makers, frontline staff. Um, so we, we, we put together this half day conference, but we had a vapors panel as well, which was made up of um, somebody who's actually used our service and chose to use e-cigarettes rather than um, uh, licensed meds, um, a local retailer and a senior um, official in the county council. And they, they, they you know, were on our panel, they talked about their experiences, the audience peppered them with questions um, and, and it changed people's minds. To actually hear people talk changed people's minds. Um, and I thought I really wanted to see this happening at UK and ECC because, you know, it's a much bigger audience um, and we could have influence um, in a way that, you know, is, is f far bigger than, than just what happens in Leicester. So I talked to Andy McEwen, um, who's one of the UK and ECC organisers, and he was really up for it. He didn't need any convincing at all. That's, again, you've got no idea how you are gladdening my heart this evening, I'm here to tell you. Um, that that it, it fascinates me. I think what you're telling us is that aside from one or two notable figures in public health, if we approach these people from the right direction and with the right perspective, do you think we're likely to be able to uh, take what you were doing in Leicester and, and move that further forward, take it countrywide? Do you, do you think that there are enough people the high, I call them the high ups because I really don't know what they are, but the public health directors in various different authorities. Do you think there's a good enough number of them that are going to be open to a scheme like this? Or, or do you think they'll wait to see how your service and Leicester gets on over, say, the next six months? What, what's the, the, the feeling there? I think it's hard to generalise. I think some will will remain um, obdurately resistant to the idea of embracing, you know, new new technologies, um, e-cigarettes. But I think a tipping point will come. Maybe it's already come, um, where enough of the right people are, are saying, well, you know, let's let's think about it differently. You know, we we know that Robert West does, um, Andy McEwen, Martin Dockrell. Um, you know, people who have um, who have oh, John Britton. I'm, I'm looking at my list. Um, you know, when we've got a GP on our side, I know it's only one GP, but you know, they they influence others. Um, and I I think we we need to expose the arguments to to public public listening um, and, and policymakers listening. And, and start changing people's minds. When we did the learning forum, we started off with a polarisation exercise, as I called it. So we asked people to, to vote, you know, were they for e-cigs, against e-cigs, or sitting on the fence? And the room was about a third each. We did it again at the end, and, you know, let's face it, that was only three, three and a half hours later. Almost everybody was on the pro side, there were two people still undecided, this is in a room of a hundred, and two against. But everybody else had gone over onto the pro side. It, right, a question here, because I, I see this, the, the obduracy in, in certain public health personalities, shall we say. The two that were against, what were their reasons for opposing, shall we say, what we would see as being a sensible course of action? One of them said that they were worried that maybe in years to come, if it was proven that um, that there was um, harm that we didn't know about now in e-cigarettes, then people could come back and, and sue us for harm that we, we'd allowed to happen. Um, and I didn't get a, a reason from the other person. So, so the, the, the only reason was the wallet? Um, well, a duty of care to the public as well. I, I, I think, I think he he made his his he, he took his position because he really felt that you know we we should wait um, for for more evidence that they're actually safe. So the argument that they're they're surely safer than smoking um, wasn't enough. And and you know I think one out of a, a hundred, two out of a hundred, that's. Uh, you know, that's still better than, than a third out of a hundred, isn't it? Oh, I, I would say you're absolutely right there, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. That's, uh, 
That's damn good numbers. And I'm seeing Sav's looking concentrated again. What you got, Sav? <laughs> got more from chat again. Um, just got a fade where I was. Yeah. Moonlit has said, incredibly important difference between NRT and E6. Nobody uses NRT for fun. Gary Dibley's got a question. He says, as they are the... Sorry, as they are ASIC friendly, have you got any stats or recommendations that you give out on a starting milligram and success rates for milligrams after the switch? Mm. Well, that's exactly the point I was making, that they need to go to Vapors forums and get some, um, get some good information, because I wouldn't know the answer to that. I really wouldn't. We have got a really helpful retailer in Leicester um, who has, has done some great work. We, we've, we've worked with eSig Wizard and I, I'm very aware that we can't you know, recommend one retailer out of, out of many for, for any other reason than they, you know, we found out that, you know, what good guys they are. Um, but I'd, I'd expect people to go to a retailer and talk to them about where to start. And we know that the retailers are so helpful too. Yeah, Sav? Yeah. Um, Lorian has said, it's amazing what happens when vapors are giving a voice and can be questioned. Slim UKV has said, Louise and her enlightened attitude could be a real turning point for us in the political sphere. Mm. Yoda 1970 has said, with all this positive stuff happening, the EU are going to have a really hard timing for enforcing the TPD oh, yes. Mr Desi Vapor said it's great to see non-vapors on our side, I could listen to this all night if I could and Slim UKV said why wasn't Louise on Newsnight instead of Martin McKee <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I don't know whether we're going to get time to go to that I, 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 I don't know whether we should actually go to that because we've got two sides of public health there we have the listening side, the sensible side, the side that seems to understand exactly what this is all about. And I've done it again. Ah, give up. I'll learn how to use this software one of these days. In, in Louise, what I'm seeing, and, and, I, and I've got no qualms in saying this, is somebody who is pragmatic, can see exactly what needs to be seen, can see the future, and is grasping it with both hands. On the other side of the fence, on the telly, the other night, we had someone who appears to have an agenda based on complete lack of knowledge, insensitivity to human beings, and the inability to look at evidence and make a sensible decision. And I, I, I'm so chuffed at what I'm hearing tonight. I'm, I'm going to go back because I'm, I'm even enjoying looking at you because you're so nice and wonderful, Louise. <laughs> so, at the UK Smoking Cessation Conference then, this Vapors panel, what are we... Because I'm on it and Lorian's on it and... and uh, Sarah. Sarah's on it. And there might be one or two other people going down as well. He said, looking to his right and waiting for Sav to nod. <laughs> <laughs> as you do. Um, yes. What 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 do you think we're going to be doing on on the vapors panel? How is it set up? Is it the Thursday? Is it the Friday? What's what's the makeup going to be? What what's intended? Do you know? I think it'll be a parallel session, so there'll be a number of sessions going on at the same time, um, and and this one will be one. Um, Andy wants uh, Jerry Stimson to chair it, okay, um, and talk a bit. Um, you're smiling. Is is that a good choice? That's a brilliant choice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, he's going to chair it and talk a bit about harm reduction and um, the potential uh, for e-cigs to to contribute to the harm reduction agenda. I'll talk a little bit about what we've been doing in Leicester, um, and you know it'll be a couple of months on as well. So maybe we'll have a bit more information to share, and then. Um, each member of the panel talking about, you know, their their kind of journey, um, you know, what what it's like for them, you know, what what sort of dear to their heart, and then the audience asking asking them questions, um, you know, to to understand it better. It'll be yeah, uh, it'll be quite interesting, I think, because the last time there was a, a parallel session on ASIG's run at a conference similar to this, apparently nobody went to anything else, and the room that the parallel session was in was rammed to the gunnels. I'm not surprised, yeah, yeah. I was going to suggest that they have it in the main hall, rather than a room that only holds 50 people. 
That sounds like a damned good idea because mm. I've, I've been having a look at uh, some of the delegates that are already on the list and I'll, I'll bring that up. Um, there it is. And you, you'll be able to see over here, everybody, on, on, on the right-hand side. Um, at the top is, is Professor Linda Bold and then Professor John Britton. I'm going to put a tick there. Uh, Berins Mary Grace Berinsky, who I know of. Uh, one Paddy Costal. We know Paddy Costal, don't we, uh, Sav? That we do, yes. Yes, I think mega good guy, we'll say there. Um, who else are we looking for? Anna Gilmore is going to be there. I would like to think that there are two names there that might find the... Uh, what is it they found on the road to Domestos? Damascus, whichever, whichever one it was. The, uh, what was it called? Anyway, all of that. Um, but there's, there's some names there. There's a Professor Jerry Stimson. I've never heard of him. Is he a good guy? Ah, he's one of the good guys. He's one of the good guys. And Professor Robert West. Um, I think it's safe to say that there's going to be some fairly hefty hitters on that one. Um, just, just, And that's by no means an exhaustive list of the delegates. They're just the people that have signed up so far. Um, I, I'm really quite looking forward to that. But you do know that on, I think it's the 3rd of April, uh, Louise, that Ash Scotland is doing something similar. Did is it the third? I wasn't sure of the date. Yes, it was the third. I, I believe you got in touch with them, didn't you? I, I've been tweeting about how uh, useful it could be to them at their event to have a Vapors panel. Yes. Have you had a reply? I haven't, um, <laughs> but maybe they're still thinking about it. Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> Somehow. Well, you never know. well maybe, maybe I should contact them direct rather than Twitter. I mean, you could argue that it's a bit um, uh, inflammatory, perhaps, to, to do it as a, as a tweet. Maybe I should have, have made a, a professional approach to them and, uh, and, and talked to them about it. Maybe, maybe I should have thought about that a bit better. I, I can be a bit headstrong sometimes and not really think it through. I'm making myself a note now. Ash, Scotland. Lovely. Okay. I think, I, I hope everybody can see now why I think tonight's so important. I, I, what, what I see in you, Louise, is somebody who gets things done. Um, and and I, I'm going to bring Dave Kitson in in a minute because he's been across to Brussels on a bit of a protest and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, but I, I have nothing but admiration for you. I'll freely admit, when first I heard about the, uh, the ESIG Insight scheme, Insight scheme, I, I did have my doubts, but having spoken to you two or three times now and, and tonight, power to your elbow. Um, I, I've got nothing but admiration. I think what you're doing is absolutely fabulous. Um, and while I, while I bring Dave in, I'll throw it across to Sav because I have a fair feeling the chat has been um, quite voluble tonight. I've just got a little... Oh, sorry, go on. Go on, no, 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 you. All right. One of the things that was really interesting about the summit was the fact that people were going to vape um, in, in, the, in the main hall. And I got a, an email about that from the organisers the Sunday before the event. And I, I, was, I was quite shocked, I suppose, that people would be vaping, you know, again, remember, I was very naive at that point, you know, that people would be vaping uh, in, a, an, in a, an enclosed public space. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everything for, for, well, since 2007 has been about, uh, you know, smoke free. Um, and of course, I was really shocked that there was absolutely no smell. That, that you could go back into the room where people had been vaping after, um, after the break and, and there wasn't any odour at all. And, and that, I suppose, stuck with me. And I talked to colleagues, you know, in the team afterwards uh, when I went back to Leicester. And um, it, it, it just sounds such a silly little thing, doesn't it? Um, but I suppose that was my naivety that I hadn't actually realised what, what, you know, it was like to be, um, you know, in an area where, where people were vaping. So, yeah, I know better now. It, it, it's a fascinating concept, isn't it? It's amazing that, that you can walk into what looks like a smoky shaft of a room, and I'm going back a few years now, um, and you walk in and you can smell peach, you can smell grapefruit, you can smell orange. If Sav's around, you can smell cinnamon and menthol. <laughs> um, if Daz is around or... Keith's around, you can smell custard. Uh, that, that bit 
does for me. But as you say, you go out of the room and the room empties for a while, you go back in and then all you can smell is, is again, sweaty, sweaty feet and perfume until people start vaping again. It, it's, it's a fabulous, uh, fabulous concept. And I think, again, it, if it's one of those things that swings public health, that's amazing. Sorry, Saf, over to you. Right, uh, from chat we've got, Boating Fuzzy has said, Louise, would it help if we put together some local vapors as buddies to help out and give moral support type thing? Um, well, yes. Uh, yeah, well, you mean Leicester people who um, who could be called up upon for, for some views and, and some, some discussion? Yeah, that... that Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Um, Bought and Fuzzy, if you could get in touch, that would be brilliant, and hopefully we can sort something like that out. Vapor Caper has said, the UK government is going to have a really hard time writing hardline regulations, never mind enforcing them. Slim UKV has said, out of interest, do you have any vapors on your staff, Louise? No, no. We've got ex-smokers, um, but, but nobody vapes. But we've started talking to some vapors um at, um at the county council uh, i got some really really good information from from one lady who um you know who talked very passionately about you know what a difference it's made to her life and and in fact she had some very useful stuff to say about um you know normalization she says she always goes outside to vape even if if it was allowed in the pub because she likes to stand with her smoking friends and all her smoking friends uh, want to know you know what she's using what she's bought where did she get it from and she's encouraged other people to to go and, and buy e-cigs and they have Brilliant. Um, Lipsy has said, tonight I'm finding all this common sense very hard to cope with. <laughs> Poor Lipsy. <laughs> Lorian has said, regarding the, the panel, no pressure then, Dave. Uh, um, never, never any pressure. Never any pressure. Much not. <laughs> no, Nelly Scrogan has said, good luck with Ash Scotland. <laughs> And Entropy72 is, what I say, Louise, is hope for the future. And, and I would agree with that absolutely, 100%. And look, look, I've been joined by somebody. We have a Dave Kitson who I managed to sneak in without making any noise. Hello, Dave. Yes, just as you put me through there, I disconnected my earphones, but I can hear you now. Oh, well, that's all good. That's all good. Have you been watching the show thus far? I've what? been watching it right from the very beginning. What, what do you make of Louise? Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic and uh, just to echo I think what a lot of people in chat have said tonight, uh, your first reaction is to be a little bit taken aback by the common sense isn't it? Yes. Um, because I, I mean for me, I don't know about you, but um, we, we've had a lot of very clever people who've spoken out in favour of E6s, um, but I think uh, Louise is probably the first person I've come across who is actually on the front line, uh, who can who can tell you firsthand exactly what does and doesn't work for people who want to stop smoking tobacco cigarettes. And if she said any works, uh, I'd find it very difficult for anybody to argue with that. Yeah, I would agree. I, I would agree absolutely 100%. And I'm, and I'm I'm so taken by this this whole concept and the, and the whole notion that you know, if it's successful, I can't honestly can't see why other authorities wouldn't take it up. I think it's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. Um, but the reason I brought you on, Dave, is because you just got back from Brussels last night, didn't you? We did, late last night, yes. Yes. Uh, we uh, went on a, a two-day little jolly trip over to the European Parliament. Um, so uh, this would be as good a place as any to say a huge thank you to Nikki Sinclair. Um, who is the MEP for the West Midlands area for the We Want a Referendum Now party. <laughs> Short name, but rememberable. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, th there's got to be some acronym they can make out of that, I'm sure. But, uh, but Nikki um, uh, arranged for us all, uh, that t picked us up in Birmingham, took us all the way to Brussels, um, put us up in a hotel, even got us some sandwiches in the Parliament building the next day. Uh, put a lot of effort into arranging a protest. Uh, in fact, a couple of different sort of variations of, of protest. Um, and 
and and and it was a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable trip. Um, if if you've not seen the European Parliament set up, um, it gives you a real insight into what makes things tick to do the tour there. So if you ever get the opportunity, I mean, seize it, well, whatever your politics, well, whatever your view of the EU, uh, it really is something that I'd recommend doing if you get the chance. Uh, we were very fortunate. We got to stand right outside the main entrance, holding up placards and making a lot of noise about e cigs and what we thought of the TPD. Um, and we got to play in one of the debating chambers. Did you get any footage of this, Div? Uh, I, I did. <laughs> can, can we can we expect to see some of that on uh, on Sunday's show? Uh, yes, once I've cleaned out the bits. <laughs> suitable for broadcast uh, the, we entered the debating chamber and the first question everybody asked as they came in is which one's McGavin's chair <laughs> why <laughs> I have no idea what they intended to do good lord but the, it was uh, it was quite an impressive room you know uh, we had microphones and stuff to play with and there was lots of bingo calling and various stuff going on in the room for a while there were a couple of officials sort of busying about and I don't think they we drank all the MEPs water Played with all the voting buttons and then left. <laughs> I, ho I, I do hope the MEP's water had been passed by the Commission. Should I have said it that way? I'm not entirely certain. Um, of course, while you were over there, if I remember correctly, you uh, you took some EFVI uh, sign-up forms and leaflets with you, didn't you? Well, we did, and then left them all on the coach. Oh dear. I, would, I need to ask Louise, are you aware of the uh, Eurobit... Euro oh, God. I'll say the European Free Vaping Initiative. Thank you, Dave. Yes, I am. Do you think it's uh, it's perhaps worthwhile um, giving sign-up forms <laughs> to your clientele? <laughs> I th yes, yes, yes. Do doesn't it have to be done online? No, no. You can sign no. up. You can sign up on paper. And then the forms can be returned to the organisers of the EFVI and they have a mechanism whereby they can do all of the inputting and, and, and everything else. Okay. So can you download the form? You can, oh, yes. I've signed up online. Yes, well, I've signed up online. I know yes. Dave has, Sav has. Um, download the form. You can download the form, yes. I'm going to be download, and well, I've downloaded all of the forms, and I'm going to uh, print a thousand off and take them around various different bricks and mortar stores over the course of the next week and see if we can get, that should give us another 3,000 signatories, I think, um, which seems like a reasonable idea. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, just going back to, to Dave, uh, a little, oh, I've done it again. Oh, work just 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 work that's it there you go i do apologize i'm trying to get the grips with these picture in picture shots and i'm just not doing it very well <laughs> amateur yeah you're right you're right nobody ever said this was professional we don't get paid <laughs> and i would be no good at it even if we did that's <laughs> just the way it goes you know that dave um yeah, uh, the, 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 where was I before I went to the amateur bit and got it all wrong? You were about to ask me something, but I don't know what it was yet. I, I, what I was going to ask you was, was it worthwhile going? And is this just the first step, do you think, in, in more visits happening? I, I don't want to take anything away from Sunday's show, but I'm just... Were you uplifted? Were you left flat? Or were you somewhere in the middle? Um, I had, I had a, a, a couple of different emotions that I felt. I, I mean, overall, uh, definitely, w without hesitation, yes, I'm glad I went. Uh, absolutely, uh, chance of a lifetime opportunity to know your enemy, <laughs> if you like. Mm. Um, uh, on the other hand, there should have been more of us. And now, um, you know, d d we had uh, we had a coach there. Uh, which we had the chance to fill with vapours and we didn't manage to do that. And you'll see in the footage tomorrow that actually there's only going to be about 20 people uh, were actually demonstrated. We had the opportunity to get 50 or 60. And you, you'll know for yourself uh, that that, that four-court area of the EU Parliament is a big area. It's vast. <laughs> 60 it's... people would have been a far more impressive show than 20. Yes. Um, 
so so if if I'm totally honest, I would say that that I felt a little bit disappointed by that, but but not 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 totally despondent or anything, mm. uh, because we did make a noise. We did get the local press out uh, with the TV cameras. Uh, we did make a lot of people come in and go in from the Parliament stop to see what we were up to and ask questions. Uh, so it was, it, it, you know, it, it was definitely worthwhile. And then on top of that, as I say, at a personal level, I found it an incredibly interesting trip. And let's face it, we all pay a lot of money towards that building. And and it was great to see, actually, uh, you know, to do the tour and listen to the people that work there and actually understand a little bit about what makes it tick. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend it for anybody, whether you go in there to protest or just to just, just to find out about the place. Indeed. I, I, I mean, I, I'm just... I'm upset that we we just couldn't make it just purely and simply on on uh, time base season because we had the programs and everything to put out. I'd have loved to have gone across there, and I will be going again. You can rest sure of that. There's, there's, while we've been talking about all of this, there's all kinds of stuff is going through my mind tonight. Um, I've I've I found talking to you, Louise, as I said earlier on, so uplifting because I can see the potential here for all manner of things going on including the ESIG Learning Forum that you did, is there a possibility that that, that can get rolled out uh, amongst more uh, authorities or, or do you think they're going to need to uh, see a little more um, proof of, of concept, if you like, in what you're doing? I, I, I don't think they should wait for proof of concept. I, I think they should do it anyway. And I know that there's a couple of other areas that, uh, you know, could well be interested. Possibly after UK and SEC, uh, there might be more. I'll, I'll certainly be recommending it as a uh, as a way to get uh, local, you know, policy makers, decision makers, um, and frontline staff interested in it. Um, so, so yeah, I think I think there's a potential to to get those that that format rolled out. It, that it sounds fabulous. Does it sound fabulous, Dave? It, it, I, I I like I said, I'm absolutely bowled over by it. And, um, you know, I, I just want to say thanks, even though I know you won't be looking for any thanks, Louise. Thanks. <laughs> I'll, I'll let go of that. I'll Thank let you. go of that. Thank you. Absolutely. Sav, um, what's Chad got to say? Right. Um, regarding what Dave was talking about, Dan Pitty has said, yes, wants to say thank you to Nikki. She was great. Mm -hmm. Slim UKV has got a question for Dave and says, OK, so what did you put in Linda McEvan's letterbox then? You'll have to tune in on Sunday to find out. <laughs> and Moonla has said, considering how much glass there is in the EU building, it's amazing they're not more transparent. Oh, very good. That was a bit clever. <laughs> Wasn't it? I like that one. <laughs> oh! Hey. You put some cracking tomatoes in that place, couldn't you? Oh, God, oh, it's a greenhouse and a rabbit warren all in one go. Did you, did you take the opportunity, Dave, to wander down the S&D corridor? We didn't. We ran out of time, sadly, because we spent so much time arguing about e-cigs with people. Uh, I think we, had, we we actually had to run to the coach virtually at the end. Oh, it's a shame. If you'd because Sav and I did this, we wandered down the S and D corridor. We actually saw McAvan's room, and if you listened at the door, all you could hear was <laughs> every time they realised that somewhere somebody was enjoying themselves. Not right. <laughs> terrible it was. Um, I think time is against us. Uh, we're very, very close to the end of the show. Uh, I do apologise for any technical issues that there might have been during the course of the evening. I am working on it as hard as I can to get this all sorted out and, and, and we will get it all sorted out. Um, I'm assured because I've checked that the YouTube stream has been absolutely bang on. So that's all good. Uh, it remains for me to say thank you to Louise Ross for joining us tonight and making this happy man feel very old. No, this old man feel very happy. Um, you, you've got no idea how much it's uplifted me and I suspect an awful lot of other people. Thank you for that, Louise. I've really enjoyed doing it and thank you, Dave, and, and Sav as well. Thank you. Well, it, it, it's, it's our pleasure to host you and I'm, I'm so looking forward to June, in fact, before then. If you need anybody to come and have a nap at the folks down in Leicester, give me a yell. I, I'm... I'll put myself up. I live just up the road. I'm in Leicestershire. There you go. <laughs> you could have 
They, you could have two Wait, divs. Oh, bar mitzvahs and uh, stop smoking shop workshops. <laughs> You're not taking a guitar, are you, Dave? No, I wouldn't do that to anyone. Oh, that's all right then. So, and and my 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 second thanks. I've got to go to Dave Kitson for coming and joining me tonight, and and just doing that little trail. It's a little teaser of what's going to happen on Sunday, and I can't wait for Sunday night show to see the footage he's got. And, and, and hear what went on because I think this is going to be fabulous and I think it was fabulous that they did and my thanks also to Nicky Sinclair for organising all of that I think that's that's just brilliant and I to see an MEP who actually does stuff isn't it mm. oh god yes yes actually listens to the people that matter and acts on what they're told that is just so brilliant um, and a final thanks to Sav and the team the backroom team who I know have been scuttling about like goodness tonight um, and as usual Sav has the last word from chat I hope yes I have I've got actually it's three last words from chat um, Keith1969 has said it's a refreshing attitude from a lovely lady every journey starts with a small step Lena Marie has said we're not used to people responding with common sense or even leading with it and Slim UKV is echoing virtually every person in chat saying please can Louise come back in a few months and update us and thank you very much coming i'd love to thank you um and, and i'll i'll say from from the bottom of my heart and this is absolutely without any fear or favor or anything like that i would love to have you back on a regular basis to keep us updated with what's going on and hopefully to drive more and more authorities into doing what you are doing i think it's amazing you have my eternal and undying gratitude for being a strong leader in the field of tobacco harm reduction. Thank you. Bless you, Dave. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the show tonight. Um, I know it's been a little bit difficult on SVP, but I do know the YouTube stream has been solid. I hope you've been able to glean some information tonight and to, to, to get a little bit uplifted, as I have been. Um, I think there's only one way to finish the show tonight and that's the only way I know how and that's just to say thanks for watching vape on vape hard and nil carbo rundum illegitimai that's posh for don't let the bastards grind you down Louise didn't neither should we see you next time until then take care night 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 night